I'm in Brighton at the AMIC conference and I'm joined by James Alexander from Lockton. Welcome, James. And welcome, hi. My first question is, what is the main benefit of environmental insurance? Um, the principal benefit is that we're insuring coverage gaps that normal insurance excludes, such as gradual contamination, pre-existing conditions. So it's a, it's a special line of insurance purely for pollution, damage and liability. Okay, thank you. Um, Boardroom agendas at the moment have got ESG high up on their agendas. There's also COP26 around the corner. I mean, what is the biggest risk, in your view, that companies face? I think the biggest risk that companies face and are responsible for is their own activity, their regulated activity within um, existing permit, permitted activities, such as exploration, production, development. Um, around the corner and looking into the future, Emerging contaminants, emerging technical investigation standards, it's only going to get tighter. So, to my mind, the biggest risk is chemicals that are currently considered benign becoming malign. Okay, thank you. And in terms of the risk assessments of sort of those in the energy, energy operators, what are the, what's the sort of biggest problem they're facing? Um, balancing the energy trilemma of demand supply and carbon reduction to meet global standards. Um, the energy market are fundamental to that process and um, I, I see the energy world as being the most important sector to assist with effective rest transfer during the transition. Okay, and I've got a magic wand I suppose now, but if there was one thing you could change to improve the environment, what would it be? Um, I'd like to see natural capital accounting introduced to all products and water resilience testing for, for the uh, freshwater resources, both for developed nations and developing nations. Okay, thank you very much, James, and I hope it happens.